I'm Mark Sainsbury. I believe behind every door there's a story. And here at the Ryman's Edmund Hillary Retirement Village in Remuera, there are some extraordinary stories. And I do love my view. I love my balcony view. Ron Mayhill is no stranger to a view. The 95-year-old was a navigator bomb aimer on Lancaster's during World War II. He even wrote the book on it. I left school in 1941. And the headmaster read out the names of old boys who died that week. And they were people I knew, and they were prefects and so on. And I knew that when I finished my schooling, 1942, I'd be conscripted. And the school had an air training corps just started up. And we got a, a very quick run through the Air Force. The Army guys called us the Blue Orchids because we were spoiled. The war wasn't real to me to arrived in Britain. The early training was exciting. We had uniforms, seeing new countries, Canada. I can remember going to Vancouver. And we rode up and down the moving staircases. They called them escalators. Never seen them in New Zealand. We thought well, everything was just wonderful. But assigned to Bomber Command, life would lose its wonder pretty smartly. Bomber Command had the highest losses of any Allied force in the World War II. We had almost 50% killed. If you take casualties, which is the wounded as well, and prisoner of war, we're up to 60 to 70%. Uh, by far the most dangerous thing. But we didn't think of that at that stage. Too much for such a young crew to consider. There were seven. The oldest was 20. There were four of us, 19. I was 19. There were two, 18. So we had two, 18, four, 19, and one, 20. I think we possibly were the youngest crew in Bomber Command. You're 19 years old. And uh, as you already knew, some of your old schoolmates were already dead. I didn't think it would happen to me. Uh, I suppose youth and optimism, uh, keenness. Uh, I didn't th really dwell on that. I didn't think of it. I never did dwell right through the war or after. How are you, Arthur? <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Mark. How are things? Good to see oh, you. Yeah, thank you very hey, much. Hey, you've, you've finished the plane? Yes, yes. I've got something for you, by the way. Hang on, do I take the... Oh, I better take the price off first. Hey, <laughs> <Aye>. $150. <laughs> yeah. How much? No. <laughs> there you go. Build a rocket? Yeah. Oh, Mark. Arthur Joplin, also 95, loves building aircraft. 75 years ago, he used to fly them. We were sent to um, Ashburton in the South Island where they we trained how to fly on, on a tiger moth and you had so many hours with an instructor and then they sent you solo. So if you didn't go solo, you went back to, to Wellington and got reassessed as a, another part of air crew. And I was fortunate enough that I, I was able to go solo. For Arthur, that meant pilot training in New Zealand, then off to Blighty. I think to me it was a big adventure. It was getting, you know, going out of New Zealand and going through the Panama Canal, which you'd read about and heard about. Um, it was all a, an adventure. So the crews were a permanent unit. You, you stayed together. Yes. How did the how did the crews get formed? Well, you got into a a fairly big room with so many pilots, navigators, and gunners, and you looked around more or less as to see who you'd like to fly with or they looked at you to see what you would like be like as a pilot and, and somehow or other you formed a crew. So you, you just, I like the look of you yep. and... Yeah, well you fly with me sort of thing. I was looking for a navigator or whatever. I know when I was looking um, with, with getting our bomb aimer, a uh, lofty Hibbard from Mosgiel, um, I went up to one chap and said, you know, he was a bomb aimer. And I said, you know, have you, and he said he was screwed up. And he said, that chap over there is 
you try him, he's pretty good. So that's how we got hold of Lofty. His crew complete, then came orders, join 617. For some reason, um, uh, we were posted straight to the squadron. And this, of course, is the famous Dam Busters squadron. That's right, yes. Yes, so I, 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 and of course, with my knowledge of the RAF, I didn't know what all this fuss was about, really. I didn't know what the Dam Busters were. You know, because all that time that the Dam Busters things were going on, we were training so out in New Zealand and we didn't hear much or didn't know much, you know. So I, I was a bit, bit, when I learnt afterwards where I was, it was quite a, a bit of a shock, really, to learn that we'd got there more or less just on our, on our own our, our, um, ability to, to, to in the bobbing range. Then those abilities were called on to take out the Tirpitz. The Tirpitz was the biggest battleship there was and it was stuck up on top of Norway. Was this daylight or night time? Daylight. So they could see, you could see it but they could see you coming? Oh yes, yeah, they knew we were coming. So, and as you're coming in, I the, presume the, the, there's all sorts of flak and oh, stuff yes, around yes, you? Oh, they're shooting at you. <laughs> they didn't welcome us. <laughs> <laughs> but you succeeded. Yes, I, I, I think we were very, very lucky that uh, we got a couple of direct hits and, 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 uh, and a few around about, and that did damage to the turfers and it rolled over and sunk. Today. Hey, Granddad, how are you? Good to see you. If your grandson was said, Granddad, I'm signing up to go and fight, what would you say? No, don't go. Mind you, World War II had to be fought. I'd hate to have gone to Vietnam or Korea or one of these pol political wars. I thought a war had to be fought. You... You're not a big fan of going to the Anzac Day things. No, I, 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 I get a bit sad about it all. It, it, um, you realise, you know, you lost a lot of friends, and I, I think it's great that the young people are going, and they might re realise that the damage that war does. But um, there's no pleasure in going to war, if you can understand. It. You know, you, you get, you're doing a job, and you, you did it. You, you, you couldn't think too much about it, otherwise you'd go, you, know, you couldn't cope. And when you fight a war, and if you go into the war, reluctantly, you've got to win. You, you don't come second in a war.